Hey everybody, this is Eric. Uh, welcome to my channel. By popular demand, I am showing you guys how I digitize. Now I am by far not an expert, barely know what I'm doing. But uh, let's go ahead, jump right into this. So I'm starting with a applique stitching, if that's what you call it. That's how uh, bare bones I am. But uh, go ahead, trace the outside of the cow's head. Okay, and because I'm digitizing in applique, I only have to circle or outline the cow's face once, and it'll give me the tack down stitch and the placement stitch. It'll actually give you three stitches, and it'll also do give you a satin stitches if you wanted that to be the, the end result. Which right now is showing it, but I'm gonna change it. I do my own thing. And I'm just going around everything that's going to match the face because we're all going to use that same fabric that one time. I'm going to go around the arms. And once I do the arms, go down and go around the feet. So I'm gonna get rid of the satin stitching and switch it from zigzag to single run just because I think it looks a lot cleaner. So I went out of order, but not a problem. We could go back and fix that later. So what I'm doing now, I'm selecting the applique stitching on the right and I'm going to group them together. So I'm selecting all the, the white body stitches together and I'm going to hit group or uh, in this case it's combine applique and I'm going to do the same for the face and udders. So here, I'm actually digitizing the patch on the uh, cow's face. Now I was doing this without Nita's approval. She prefers less stitching, and I think this is a better look. So maybe down in the comments, leave me what you guys think. Do you think it would look better with the stitching, with the uh, patches, or what she says? She has fabric that already has the patches, so 
little bit more streamlined, less stitches, less stitch time. So let me know what you guys think, because I am not the pro. So one trick for the eye, if you have the matching stitching, it can get pretty confusing and you won't really be able to see the eye. But if you turn the angle of the stitches, it really shows up a lot better. But uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna change the color to brown. So it pops either way. So one more trick, I'm gonna leave in the video for you guys. Uh, I just learned how to do it. So you saw earlier, I did a fill stitch for that spot. And as you can see, the eye is sitting on top of the stitches. So I went to edit objects and I am digitizing a hole. So I went around the eye, hit enter. And as you can see on the right, there's now a hole on that patch. And look how good that looks. I think Nita Pito's wrong in this case, but you guys let me know. So instead of having to outline and redigitize the whole eye, I'm just going to copy and paste everything I did for the other eye and just drag it over. And uh, in some cases, you might have to flip it, mirror it, like I did with the white part of the eye. And all you have to do is right click it, hit mirror, and move it over. Very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to the horns. Um, I like to work on the details first before I finish the outlining. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this and work my way down. And you see me here, anytime you get anything round, go ahead and use the circle, oval, digitize, object key, whatever they call it, uh, to make it. It takes three clicks, you get a perfect oval, perfect circle, whatever you're going for, as you can see here. So I'm going to switch to digitize a closed object for the feet. The reason I do these first is because I want the final applique, or sorry, not applique, the final satin stitches to sit over top of them. And once again, I am not an expert, so I'm just showing you how I do it, and hopefully, you know, they come out good. Um, if you follow my directions and they don't come out good, I apologize. I am so sorry, but we'll test these in front of you. Uh, if I don't test them myself, I'm going to have Nita Pita test them on a live or something. 
But uh, we'll test them before uh, you guys ever get a chance to use them. So I just wanted to leave this in the video for you guys. For details like the hair, if you try to do a single line stitch through the center of it and have it as a, a satin uh, stitching, it doesn't really, it doesn't have the looks that I'm going for at least. So what I use is a closed shape and I'm going to zoom in uh, very close and I'm going to trace the entire, oh my god, my dog with his cone, sorry guys, I'm going to in trace the entire uh, outline of the hair and I'll show you how it looks, looks much better in my opinion. Okay, so now to digitize the body, we're gonna go to digitize on the left, select digitize open shape, and get to work. So I don't think I mentioned yet, when you're digitizing, uh, the left click on the mouse will make a straight line, and if you're doing a curve, you right click. So uh, sometimes you notice the I'll go back a couple times because I right clicked when I should have left clicked or I left clicked when I should have right clicked. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain but once you start doing it you'll kind of get it pretty quick. And here we go. So I'm going to stop at the mouth. Uh, the mouth I'm actually going to do, uh, I'm going to have it overlap the face because I want the mouth to be kind of on the outside like in art or any picture. Uh, anything that's closest to you, it's going to sit on top of everything else that's behind it. So you figure, you know, a cow's face really, it's uh, cl the nose is closer to you than the eyes and the rest of the face. So same thing with the hands and the uh, legs. The ones in the back will get done first, so the rest of the stuff could overlap it. So that's going to do it with the white stitches. Uh, I did miss the arm in the front. Uh, I go back later and get it. But now I'm switching to pink thread and I am going to outline the mouth and the udders now. And uh, you'll notice problems happen as you go, uh, but don't worry, it's pretty easy to adjust it. As you see here, I'm going to move the hand and I'm going to move the arm by just reshaping it up in the left corner. You'll see I selected it already. Uh, I just didn't want it as that close to the uh, mouth of the cow, so we're just doing our own little adjustment on the fly. Uh, you'll notice I'll also adjust the applique stitches, the tack on stitches underneath and that's what I'm doing here so I'll do that twice for each stitching
so like I was saying, sometimes weird things just happen on this uh, application. It's uh, definitely not my fault. Okay, it's it's definitely my fault. But like I said, anytime something is weird, it's pretty easy to go back and kind of blindly walk your way through the fix. So there you go. It looked weird. I went, moved some things around, and it looks like clean stitching to me. And I'll do the same up here. So once I pretty much have the entire cow uh, digitized, or at least outlined with the satin stitching, I go back and I find the spots that look weird and don't look right, and I just fix it. In that case, the foot uh, didn't look good being underneath that stitching, so I brought it on top. We'll see how it stitches out, but I believe it looks a lot better. Thanks, Rocco. So I'll go ahead and zoom in real close and just like I did the hair, I'm going to trace the entire udder. And then I just copy. I, I do three more copies. I don't have to stitch it out and I'm done. And here I am going back and taking care of the arm. So just like I did the udders and the hair, I am tracing it just because I get that nice detail. I feel like when I do the satin stitches, it ends up uh, very blocky and I'm sure there's a way to change it. I just don't know how to yet because I'm such a noob. So this is how I'm doing it for now. Uh, you guys down below should let me know which way you like better. Do you like it with satin stitches there for the arm? are the way I did it. Oh, look at, I forgot one more thing. The ears. I need if he'd actually caught this one, so. Real quick, go back. Outline the ears. And do the same on the other side. And we're done. So on the right hand side here, I'm just organizing all the stitches uh, in a groups of colors so they don't have to keep switching the stitches out when you go to embroider it. So that's just more fine tuning. I think you guys kind of get the idea.
so I need your guys' opinion down below. Do you guys like it with the spot stitched in or without it? Let me know. I kind of like the look with it, but if it's too much stitching, I get why you wouldn't want it. So let me know. The only thing left to do is to export it in the file choice that you need for your machine, which is a very simple thing. I'll have to do it in another video though because I did not record myself doing it now. So we'll try that one again next time if you guys want me to make more, of course. And if you're interested in receiving a free uh, embroidery design to your Etsy store, uh, please sign up for Nita Fujita's email list at her website. I'll leave the link down below. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Just enter your email. And uh, once we fine tune the process, we will be sending one out once a month. And you'll be able to you know, create your own blankets, hats, shirts, whatever with our designs and upload them to your Etsy. And I'll try to make them so they relate to the, to the time of the year. So Valentine's Day, maybe we'll send out a Valentine's Day one uh, Easter maybe we got something in store for Easter so well hopefully I was able to provide something of value for you today um, if I was please like and subscribe and uh, down below if you have any questions uh, please leave them down below um, questions comments let me know what you like let me know what you didn't like and you know uh, let me know if I should post more of these I definitely want to I enjoy it Alright, well thank you guys. You guys have a good night. Bye.